Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. Well, Butterick finally released their fall patterns. I feel like this is the one I have been waiting for. I don't know why, I just feel it in my bones that this is going to be a good collection for fall. So let's jump right in. We've got a lot to cover. Okay, so first up, we have this Mrs. Jacket, Sash, Coat, Vest, and Pants. All right, so it looks like they have made this one out of like a drapier fabric. Loose-fitting jacket, coats, and vest have collar, shaped hemline, wrong side shows, and narrow hem. Long sleeves and sash, stitched hem on sleeve with button tab, sleeveless version something called a front shield loose fitting oh pants too yeah loose fitting pull on pants have back elastic okay side seam pockets and stitched him so clearly we're still on the elasticized pant kick it is like the pant design of 2019 this is the uh what are they calling this front shield so it's kind of like taking hints from a um, trench coat, but also like a waterfall situation, like a looser, drapier trench coat. I mean, that's kind of cool. I love how different all of these are. You know what I mean? Like you could make all three of these and they would look like three different patterns. So that's interesting. The pants to me are kind of just like a throw in. Like, okay, let's just throw some pants in. Um, but I don't hate, I definitely don't hate this design at all. I just don't know how it would necessarily fit into my wardrobe, but if I saw any of you making it and wearing it, I would be like, that is so cool. <laughs> Good for them. You know, like this little, you know, I love a cropped jacket. Maybe it's just the length of it that I'm just like, eh, I don't know. Maybe not for me, maybe not for my style, but I do think it's cute. Does that make sense? Um, it looks like it comes in the alphanumeric sizing, extra small to medium, and then large to extra large. The yardage, well, they're recommending chalet, rayon, linen, crepe, ponte, and staple knits. I mean, that really runs the gamut um, of fabrics, and I'm assuming... For example, like the chalet rayon would be great for this one. Maybe some of these, uh, definitely the crepes and then like the ponties and stable knits, maybe more so for this cropped version. Oh, and the pants too. I wish that they would like separate it out and say like views A and B would, are good for these fabrics. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, you could find a really nice kind of mid-weight rayon, like a rayon twill, for example. That would be really great out of this. And there's also some that I'm envisioning that they didn't even mention really, kind of like um, maybe like a mid-weight chambray would be great for like a denim version, even sweater knits for this version. So yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot to be done with it. Uh, you need some buttons some elastic for the pants and bias tape, I guess for the armhole maybe. Uh, and then here's your yardage requirements. And do we have any finished? No finished measurements at all. Yeah. So yeah, cool. Okay, next up, now this I'm already liking. This is a Katherine Tilton jacket. And, you know, Katherine Tilton is known for funky, kind of eccentric designs. Like, for example, how the button tab is extended here beyond the hem of the jacket. They aren't intended to match up. You know what I mean? Like little funky details like that, which can easily go from being like, whoa, that's cool, to is that a mistake? Like this one looks very intentional to me when it's unbuttoned. Um, but when it's buttoned, it kind of looks like, I don't know, a little tail. 
but I do love the shape of it. I love how it pulls away from the body at the hem, but it's kind of more fitted at the shoulder. That's really cool. Let's see, jacket has upper and side pockets, two piece sleeves with cuff, that's a really nice detail, extended front band and top stitching details, and then for A, which I think is this, I think, uh, cuffs and front band have snap closures, and for B, cuffs and front band have buttoned closures. Here are all of our details. I don't really, so the only difference between A and B is snaps and buttons. So there you go. But yeah, look at all these really pretty details. And this, obviously, you don't have to extend this if you don't want to. You could certainly make this the same length as the hem if that was just a little too weird for you. But I don't know. It's kind of cool, I guess. Um, let's look at the yardage. So velveteen, okay. Cotton blends, denim, twill, linen. Yeah, definitely a woven midweight to heavyweight even. See how hers is a little bit more drapey, so it's falling closer to the body than this one, which is pulling away. Yeah, I mean, that would be a really fun jacket. Uh, buttons and snaps, and then alphanumeric sizing. All of them are in one pattern, extra small to extra large. And then here's your fabric requirements and no finished garment measurements. So yeah, this one's kind of fun. I don't always love the Catherine Tilton patterns. Sometimes they're just like a little too funky for me. Um, but this one I feel like is very, you know, mid-range funky. <laughs> All right, now we've got a Connie Crawford jacket. Um, and I feel like Connie Crawford is known for different sizing. Maybe just an extended range. So yeah, extra small to 6X available on this guy here. And it looks like a really cool little jacket. Loose fitting, below hip length unlined jacket has large convertible collar what is that long sleeves with cuffs and stylish patch pockets yeah that version looks cool too is that the same just without the contrast front contrast nope yeah, let's, yeah, modern fit with ready to wear sizing. Yeah, so she has a different way of doing her sizing. Boucle, wool, denim, linen, and polished cotton. Okay, let's look at the line art. So are the line drawings the same? Yeah, I think they're the same jacket. You just have the option of like doing this piece in a contrast which other than doing what they did here, I'm having a hard time kind of thinking of other fun things that you could do with that other than like color blocking. But yeah, it's a cool little design. They're, the three jackets we've seen so far are kind of similar, but all different too, you know? They definitely all have kind of like the loose fitting um, nature certainly the length is there on all of them even the shortened version of the first one we saw is relatively longer length so yeah and it's almost like the buttons are not on center front either which is interesting i guess kind of like i don't know if it's double breasted or not i don't know if there's other buttons on the inside or what but yeah, this one's cool. I could even see it in like other fabrics like, you know, corduroy and twills and stuff like that. All right, so we've got two different size ranges. You've got your miss from extra small to extra large and then your women sizing from 2XL up to 6X. And then here's your fabric requirements, including the contrast and then no finished garment measurements. That's fun. All right, another coat. This one is more of a standard trench coat. Mrs. Petite outerwear and belt. So I think the petite only means that there are options for altering it to be petite. 
I don't think that you can only buy this if you're petite, I think. Um, lined is our first lined one, I think. Or maybe one of the others was partially lined. Loose fitting jacket and coat have front extending to collar, meaning like all of this is grown on one piece. Uh, front pocket with band. Yeah, that's really, that's a pretty detail. Two piece sleeve and self fabric belt. Contrast lower sleeve on one version. Also some button trim and top stitching. So just some extra details. Oh, little fur call fur cuff detail. That's fun. I do like the grown on sleeve where it's all one. A, it's easier to sew. Um, but B, I think it looks warm and cozy how it kind of rides up on your neck a little bit, you know? Yeah, super cool. I guess the button trim was hard to see on B, but it's right here. And I think that also maybe means that they're not working buttons. But yeah, let's look at the line drawings. Okay. So yeah, they're just three different lengths. And then this one has the fur trim. This one has all this top stitching, which is really cool. And I couldn't tell on C. Yeah, they didn't, is this C? Let's see. No, C is the red coat. Still hard to see. Let's zoom in. Whoa. Yeah, not that easy to see in this photo, but it's there. Um, you could definitely kind of amp that up a little bit too if you put some kind of like batting in between those two layers. Um, that would definitely help that stand out some. And then the belt is separate and there aren't belt carriers. I don't love that. I don't love like if your belt comes untied, it falls on the ground and then you lose it. <laughs> At least that's how it happens in my head. You know what I mean? Like in my life, I'm losing this belt the first time I wear it. <clears throat> it does look like a nice jacket. If you've never made a jacket before, I feel like this would be a good like intro to jacket making situation. I wonder if there are, yep, there are shoulder pads here. So you can kind of see how, you know, just kind of soft and full the shoulder looks. I think it adds like a beautiful detail to um, jackets, especially too, because this one is clearly gonna be pretty heavy. Um, so it gives something for it to kind of hold on to or like hang from. All right, so wool blends, tweed, gabardine, poplin, and then mohair for the cuff. Oh, no, mohair for the whole jacket. Okay. Faux fur for the cuff or velveteen, satin, and brocade. Those are all. I like they gave different options for that cuff. I'm trying to think what else you could put on there. Even like a, I don't know, like a, I'm trying to think of like, a double knit or, you know, I don't know, something puffy. <laughs> and then lining fabric for the lining. Okay, so you need your shoulder pads. And they're only half inch shoulder pads. They're not going to make you look like a linebacker. Um, and then some buttons for the button trim. And then it comes in two sizes. You have the small to large and then the extra large and 2XL. Um, so it does go up all the way to 2XL, which is good. Here are your fabric requirements and no finished garment measurements again. Yeah, this is nice. I mean, I have a ton of jacket patterns, so I don't think I will be investing in this, but if you don't have any, I think this one's really nice. Or if you need tons and tons of them because you live in, you know, really cold weather. All right, now we have a Lisette pattern. This one's cool. This one's kind of very cool. I love the idea of this like contrast sash. I feel like you could do so much with that, even into like holiday fancy, you know, like if you did a black ponte and then like a sequin, a black sequin here, or I don't know, my mind is kind of going crazy with all the different things that you could do here. Certainly like a play on stripes if you wanted to do that contrast stripe detail 
or of course the color blocking. Fitted dress has seam details, center back invisible zipper, and sleeve length variations. So there it is with a little three quarter sleeve. Um, you couldn't tell in this sample, but it does have little bust darts and I'm sure some shaping is built into this whole thing as well. Yeah, let's see the back. Oh, the back has beautiful shaping. So, you know, I'm always harping on fisheye darts. The darting is built into these princess seams. But it is interesting to me that the designer only thought to color block this portion and not color block anything on the back. Certainly a design choice you could make for yourself, you know, if you wanted to color block this part as well, that would also be fun. Or if you could make it like a wraparound, like color blocked here over the left shoulder and then come back in over here. I don't know if that would be cool or weird. I guess it depends on the fabric. But if you don't like anything like this stark of a contrast, you could do like a monochromatic situation, like a light cream and a beige, you know, that would be really elegant. And I mean, I like the fit of it. I mean, it's definitely a, a body skimming situation, but it is skimming the body, you know? This one's tempting. Okay, yardage. Crepe, wool blends, linen, cotton blends, double knits, and ponties. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a ponty. And they come in a gajillion colors, ponties do. So yeah, that one's fun. I don't know about crepe. Uh, that feels like a little lightweight to me, but maybe there are some medium to heavyweight crepes. Um, but yeah, can you imagine also in like um, crepe back satin where you do like the satin side would be the contrast and then the crepe side would be this. That would be really cool, kind of like a play on textures. It'd be the same color, but just a different texture. I think that this pattern ha can go for miles and miles. Um, it could be a real powerhouse for sure. All right, two size ranges, six to 14 and then 14 to 22. And then here's your fabric requirements. I guess Butterick isn't doing finished garment measurements online. All right, this one's sweet. We've got a dress, wrap dress, which makes me think it's a true wrap. Um, has semi-fitted bodice with tie closures, front pleats, and narrow hem. A has three-quarter sleeves with double-stitched hem, straight skirt, and right front pleats. B has three-quarter sleeve with flounce, and C has long sleeve with elastic casing. And then B and C have a flared skirt. Okay, a lot of options here. So it's a little low cut, as with a lot of wrap dresses. Um, but the pleating detail coming from here and then also from down here is really nice. I like that. It even has this little swoopy like petal skirt, which is really nice. Very feminine. Here is our flared skirt. And that might be the elasticized sleeve. It's a little long on her, but... And then there's the little flounce, and it only has the pleats on the bodice if you make the flared skirt version. Elasticized sleeve. Yeah, I mean, this is cute and sweet. Is this a woven? No, it's a knit pattern. Okay, good. So 35% cross grain. So jerseys, interlocks, cotton knits, rayon knits. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's You couldn't do things like Ponty or, you know, anything really mid-weight because of these pleats. They just would not, they would not lay right. Um, but all of those other ones would be really, really great. Where's the, so it's, so is it a true wrap? If it doesn't wrap around the back, 
I think. I can't remember if where the straps would go. It kind of looks like this might just be sewn into the side seam, but it's really hard to tell from any of these, like what's really happening there. I think it's lovely. I really like the long sleeve version, maybe with the shorter skirt. Yeah, I think it'd be a lot of fun. And a solid prints. I was just at Joanne scouting fabrics for the sew along that I started yesterday. And um, they have a ton of solids and uh, jersey solids that would be really, really pretty. They also had um, actually a lot of the fabrics that I recommended for that sew along would be great for this. So if you get some and uh, like you can't decide, I don't know. If you decide to get two fabrics, I don't know. You can do one for that dress and one for this one. Yeah, I, it does make me a little antsy bit nervous about the neckline. I mean, it's not too low, you know, but it does show a little bit of clavage. All right. Did we go over this already? Oh, look, finished garment measurements. Just when I said, I don't think Butterick does finished garment measurements. Either way, it's pretty unhelpful as they only did the width and length. So might as well, in my opinion, not do it at all. <laughs> okay. Fun. I like that one. All right. Here is another dress. Okay. Digging this already. So close fitting dress in two lengths has front gathers, flare hem, invisible zip, raglan sleeve variation in two lengths and neckline finish variation. That's cool. Elastic sleeve casing forming self ruffle and neck binding. Elastic sleeve casing, neck binding, double flounce, and then collar and sleeve flounce. That, that is a lot. Okay. It's really hard to tell what she's got going on other than some kind of seaming here, which I'm loving, and then something happening at the neckline. There you go. Okay. So there's raglan and then the, maybe like a little slit here. And then this is gathered up into the neckband, which is nice. Oh, and then this little sleeve detail. That's fun. This is cute. I like this one. Oh, and look, the double flounce. That's fun. All right, I'm digging this one. So, yeah, okay, so all raglan sleeves, they all have this little, pretty much the same center front bodice. And then this one has a little like kind of like a stand collar, I guess. And then three sleeve options and three hem options. And then there's your back. Cute. I don't have anything like this in my stash. I like this one. I'm liking long sleeve knee length dresses like a lot for fall. Like I am just obsessed with that. And then because I live in North Carolina, it stays, you know, relatively warm here. I mean, we don't have like below zero winters or anything. You could even make a cute little moto jacket or a little fur vest. That would be so cute. Or even a denim vest or all the vests. <laughs> I like this one. Okay. Double Georgette, crepe, chalet, rayon. Yeah. All of those options. All of those would be great options. Okay. Invisible zippers, hook and eyes, elastic, and some bias tape. Bias tape for A. I wonder where that goes. It must have something to do with the sleeve. And then here's your fabric requirements. Kind of a lot of fabric, if I'm being honest. Anytime a dress is over two yards, I'm like, eh. I mean, granted, it's only one eighth of a yard over two yards, but still. Okay, cute. If I were logged in, I would add this to my wish list. I will do it later. All right, now we've got this fun little number, Mrs. Dress and Sash. Wow. Okay, a lot to love about this one. Close fitting dress has gathered front with pleat detail, flared skirt, back invisible zipper, sleeve and hem variation. There's an above mid length and sash, a below mid length 
gathered sleeve button cuff and sash, and then there's a slanted hem and a flared sleeve. So you can see here this detail, how fun would that be? It's kind of like a bow. Doesn't it look a little bit like a bow? You know, the center part, and then this would be like the bow part. And then you've got this very dramatic sleeve with a, you know, kind of wide cuff. This is the sash. And then maybe this is below knee. Cute. I love this. I do like this sleeve better than the Victorian sleeve. I don't hate the Victorian sleeve. I just, mm. and this is also really nice. The asymmetrical hem. Then there it is with a short sleeve. Also enjoy that very much. All right. So again, the sash, sash is separate. That's hard to say. Um, so I don't know. You could definitely add in some sash carriers, <laughs> some, some thread loops here to keep it in place. Whatever. Um, but yeah, I like this. Obviously, you can mix and match all these skirts with all these tops. That's, I like that one too. I might be, you guys, I think my instincts were right about this. So far, you know, I'm loving two things and that hardly ever happens, or at least it hasn't happened very much this year. I've liked stuff, you know, put it on the wish list and I don't know, maybe if it goes on sale, but these are like good Okay, crepe, chalet, peach skin, staple knits. And you know what else too that's like not good for my wallet is again, I just was at Joanne and all these like lightweight fabrics that are like ideal for fall garments, I have them all in my head. So I can already imagine them. <laughs> and that's dangerous. Okay, um, so... 24 inch zipper, hook and eye, and some buttons. Two size ranges, 6 to 14, 14 to 22. And then here are your fabric requirements. Yeah, you'd need a lot more fabric for that asymmetrical hem. That makes sense. And yeah, I like this one. I just like that I don't have a bodice like this, you know? Okay. Now here's another one. This seems to have a contrast yoke. Fitted dress has self-lined contrast yoke with or without front opening and collar, princess seams and center back zipper. This also looks like it might, oh my gosh, I didn't even notice that. It's woven, woven in stable knits, okay. So you've got this yoke into a sleeve. Is that all one piece? No, the sleeves are set in. Um, kind of giving the illusion of like, do you remember in the 90s when it was really popular, maybe early 2000s, to wear a like button down, like a white crisp button down shirt underneath a strapless dress? Like I'm getting those vibes. The skirt is like my favorite kind of skirt. It has this asymmetrical button thing, which is a little bit like why <laughs> um, and then princess seams on this version also longer sleeve I guess they wanted it to come from the princess seam but it kind of just looks twisted you know what I mean But there's no waist seam, super comfortable. Yeah, I don't know if I can get over that twisty looking thing. I mean, obviously there's this one that doesn't have the twisty thing. And then the back has your princess seams. I don't know, this could be a lot of fun if you found the right fabrics. Hmm. <laughs> this is one of those things where I'm going to see someone else make it like on Instagram or something. And I'm going to be like, oh my God, I love that. What pattern is that? And then I'm going to come to this and find it and be like, oh, 
wow, that looks totally different. Like it looks better. Hmm. Okay. So crate, cotton blend, chalet, linen, stable knits. Yes. Bias tape, invisible zippers, some buttons and some snaps. Then you have your two size ranges, eight to 16 and then 18 to 24. And then my goodness, why do you need so much fabric? For A and B? It must be this skirt. Oh, and because there's no waist seam. Yeah, I guess you do need that much. Wow, that makes me not like it even more. I don't like, I don't like buying a lot of fabric. Unless maybe the end of bolt sales, like LA Finch Fabric does a bunch where you can get like I don't, an insane amount of yardage for not a lot of money. Um, follow them on Instagram to see about those. But yeah, you need four and three quarter yards to make like a size 14. <clears throat> hmm. And then for the uh, narrower skirt, narrower skirt. Oh, it doesn't matter. Contrast, yoke and sleeves, contrast, yoke, sleeves and collar, contrast, yoke, sleeves and collar. But the basic base dress, wow. Wow, yeah, I guess because there's no waist seam. All right, let's move on. Now we have this. This one has the custom cup sizes, which we all love. It's like a trench coat dress, double-breasted blazer dress. Very, very, like, powerful. Button dress has fitted bodice and invisible side seam zipper with sleeve and skirt variations. A has a, A and B have flared skirts. C has a sleeve flounce skirt with center back slit, separate pattern pieces for your cup sizes. Okay. First look, this reminds me of something Kate Middleton would wear, right? With like just below the knee, very tailored. Here's the short sleeve version, which is also really cute. Makes it a little less office-y, you know? Oh, and then a bell sleeve with a fitted skirt. That's fun. Look at her hair. <laughs> okay. I mean, okay. I mean, obviously you can mix and match these sleeves. So if you wanted to do this sleeve on the flared skirt, you could definitely do that. Pretty straightforward otherwise. I mean, obviously, this is the real moment of the dress. What are they recommending for fabrics? Linen, crepe, gabardine, wool crepe, or lightweight tweed. So it's definitely intended to be a play on a jacket, like a jacketed dress. That is it growing on me definitely growing on me. The idea of a tweed dress, like that's so fun. Hmm. <laughs> this might make it to the wish list, guys. When are these going on sale? Because I cannot spend $14 on, <laughs> on all of them. Hmm. Okay. You need an invisible zipper and some buttons. Two size ranges, 6 to 14, then 14 to 22. We've got my, you know, two-ish yard requirement. <laughs> it does go higher for B because I guess the skirt is longer. Yeah. So I'd be making, I'd probably make A. Yeah. Cool. I like this one too. Are you guys liking these as much as me or am I just like in La La Land this morning? Okay, here is a shirt dress. This is a little ill-fitting through here. We've got a lot of drag lines happening. Dress has fitted bodice and princess seamed flared skirt. Sleeve and length variations. Separate pattern pieces for your cup sizes. Okay. Hmm. 
Okay, so we've got a dart here and then princess seams in the skirt plus a center front button placket. Okay, here's the knee length version. And then that's like a midi length. Yeah, this one looks a little mature, you know. I'm trying to think, what is it reference? It's just the length, the fullness and the length of the skirt together. I don't know about that. Obviously, this one I love. This one with the asymmetrical, like, handkerchief hem in a lighter weight fabric, that's also the problem. This is a very like stiff fabric so it's floating away from her body it's like a 50s dress but with more modern like collar situation happening i guess but if you did it in a lighter weight fabric that would fall closer to the body especially with this handkerchief hem i think that that would be lovely it has potential. See how they're making it look a little bit more drapey here? A little bit more, you know, kind of bell-shaped versus just straight out. Especially with this one. But they're all kind of the same. That's also the, maybe that's the other reason why. You know, they just have different hems. Like, I wish that there was a collarless version or, I mean, easy enough to change out the sleeves. You can even make it sleeveless, you know, all of that to kind of change it up some. But I guess you could do different things like, you know, add some ruffle details or hmm, change the shape of the collar. But you'd have to, you know, do some work to get that to happen. I don't hate it. I definitely don't hate it. I'm just not sure if I need this in my life. Okay. Cotton blends, poplin, chalet, lightweight denim, linen, rayon. Yeah, it's going to be that <laughs> hard to find, fun, interesting mix of like light, uh, not lightweight, mid-weight drapey or the the heavier side of lightweight you know like chalet i don't know about chalet i don't know about chalet for the collar and all of this that's happening up here poplin is a little stiff like this some cotton blends depending on how much of what is blended with the cotton you know do you know what i'm saying Okay, nine buttons or 15 buttons, depending on the length, six to 14, and then 14 to 22. And then here are your yardage requirements. Although this says it goes up to 24, so I'm not sure if that's an error or what. Okay, next. Oh, oh, a lifestyle wardrobe. You know I love the wardrobe patterns. You get a jacket, dress, top, skirt, and pants all in one. It's one of my favorite things to do. It's a real go-to to have all these options in one. Okay, so here's our jacket, kind of like a play on a, um, shoot, like a British, what, I, won't, I can't want to say petticoat. I know that's not it. Top coat? What are they? That's, that's nail polish. Um, you know what I mean? Like the British uh, war fighter people or like, confederate army situation you know where it's like do y'all know what i'm trying to what i'm envisioning i also think this is buttonless which is nice i think they made this out of um dupioni silk which is just very interesting i love the sheen with the texture and then you've got these pants you've got a little top you've got a fitted dress which is basically like a lengthened version of the top. It's got this little gathering detail here. And you've also got a skirt. 
Aren't these fun? I love wardrobe patterns. Look, you can even make a little capsule wardrobe mix and match. If you travel a lot for work, can you imagine making like coordinates like this? And then all you would need to bring are these one, two, three, four, five things. And you have all these different outfits. You can even put the jacket over the dress. The jacket on this thing that they didn't, they haven't shown that. You could, I guess, technically put the skirt over the dress. You know, lots of options. Okay, I do love the jacket and I have been known to buy wardrobe patterns just for the jackets because they're so good usually. The little tops are cute too, an easy little, like probably less than a yard, maybe right at a yard. The pants have no waistband. And then, ooh, fisheye darts in the back of the dress. I love that. And I bet you could kind of like mash together if you wanted a wider skirt on this, you could probably mash these together somehow. Fun, right? Okay. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of fabric options because you're sewing dresses, skirts, pants, jackets, I mean, different weights and stuff. Again, I wish, I mean, they did it sort of here. C and D could also be in chalet. D could also be in sequin fabric. They sort of did it. Um, C and D are the skirt and top and D is the skirt out of sequin fabric. Okay. Well, you go. Zipper, 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 hook and eye, and twill tape. 6 to 14, and then 14 to 22. And then, yeah, here's your jacket, your dress, your top, your skirt, lining for the skirt, and your pants. Yeah, that jacket is good. I could probably, I don't know about making those pants work for me. I mean, I could spend a lot of time doing that, I guess, if I wanted. But this is cute. This is cute. The jacket's cute. That one's fun. Okay. Now we have a top, I think. Mrs. Top. Loose fitting. Oh, that's interesting. That, hmm. <laughs> Button top has collar variations, elasticized sleeves, long sleeves with button cuffs, sleeves with flounce. Okay. I don't know. I get the idea of it being like a scarf that's kind of attached. I can't tell if that's cool or not. Here it is just tied with the flounce sleeve. We've got a little bust dart, button front with a V-neck, which is interesting. That's a pretty sleeve. No collar tie thing. I don't know. What do we think of this? Hmm. Maybe if it were a little bit looser, but maybe not. Maybe if it just weren't in satin. I don't know. I can't tell. I hope these pants are in this collection though. Those pants are bomb. I love the shape of this sleeve. Yeah. Okay. Crepe de chine, charmeuse, crepe, double georgettes, and silk. This might actually be silk. I love it in a solid. I think that was a good move. Hmm. <clears throat> buttons, elastic, buttons, buttons, and then fabric, you need I mean one to two yards, well, well mostly two yards, on average two yards I would say. Hmm. That one is perplexing. Again, I don't hate it. I'm just confused. Not in a bad way though. Oh, this is so vague. 
<laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think of this one? All right, now we've got this fun top. It looks like we're hitting top territory. Again, with a very interesting neckline. I, I have to say, if this is where we're gonna go with the next few patterns, the next few top patterns, I appreciate the effort, right? Because I feel like this year, every collection has been a little bit basic, right? It's been like elasticized pants, you know, simple tops, maybe with a sleeve detail. I appreciate the effort that's going in to these to make something special. So let me say that. Um, I do like this neckline better than the last one. Again, I'm not sure if I love the silk satin look, but nonetheless. You've got this sleeve that I like. I haven't seen much of this sleeve lately, so I do like that sleeve. Here it is without the like little cutout. Yeah, a different sleeves. Close fitting tops have front and back slits. We'll take a look at that in a second. Raglan sleeve variation, stand up collar and stitched hem. Flared sleeve with slit, gathered sleeve with button cuff, flared sleeve with elastic casing, forming a self-ruffle. Okay. Oh, here's our back slit. That's how you get into it. I guess there's like a, maybe a hook and eye or something. The shirt tail hem is nice. Raglan sleeve. And then that version. Crepe de Chine, Charmeuse, Crepe, Double Georgette, Chalet. Hmm. Yeah, hook and eye, some buttons, elastic, bias tape. And then about two yards for your fabric requirements. Maybe I, this just doesn't fit into my lifestyle. Maybe that's what I'm struggling with. Look, where would I wear this? It could be really spectacular and really special if placed, well, if made in the right fabric and then placed in the right situation. Like, I feel like she's going to like a party, right? That's where she's going with her little clutch and her dress pants. Yeah, I'll have to think about that. <clears throat> okay, here's another top with an interesting neckline. Super interesting neckline. I feel like this is a little tab and you drape the fabric through it. Loose fitting top has overlay variation, center back zipper, and long sleeve with or without a flounce. Oh, that's very different. Look at the sleeve, those are cute. Little bust darts. Oh my gosh, they're all so different. That one's fun. I guess that's the overlay. Okay. These I feel like maybe are a little more casual. They just got this silk in every color, didn't they? Again, I feel like the solid is the right move. This looks like the back, but it's the front. I do like the sleeve on all of them. Yeah, I like all of these. I definitely would, if I, if I were in a store and I saw these hanging on the hanger, I would at least try them on, I think. Whereas the other two that we just looked at, I'm not sure that I would. Crepe de Chine, Charmeuse, Crepe. Georgette, Shally. Yeah, I mean, obviously you could do your silks, your silky types, like Joanne likes to call it. A button, an invisible, a 20 inch invisible zipper. Are you kidding? For a top? Is it zip all the way down to here? You don't need a 20 inch zipper. You need like a six inch zipper.
6 to 14, and then 14 to 22, and then less than 2 yards, mostly. C requires a little bit more because it has this swoopy um, overlay thing. I also feel like this line here makes it look like, I mean, it is an overlay, but on hers, I'm not seeing that. Oh, yeah, there it is. Just blend it in. Ah, yeah, these are intriguing for sure. Okay, another top with overlays. Loose fitting top has front and back overlay, back button and thread loop closure, sleeve variations. Okay. So we've got this little drapey situation. I like that it's shaped. If it were just all one length, I don't know. I've seen those before and it looks a little, I don't know, just a little too much. Here it is with the, what, is that not what she's wearing? No, hers has a seam here, okay. This is shorter also. I like how it looks like it's all one swoopy thing, you know? There's a longer sleeve. Oh, that's the back overlay. Hmm. That's giving me um, drum majorette, you know, with the batons and all that. That's that's what I that's what I'm getting. I don't you could leave that off, certainly. That might be the best move. Do all of them have that? They all have that. No, I don't like that part. I don't know how it's designed. It might all be one. Because if you left that off, then you'd have to sew this one into the side seam. And I don't know if I like that either. Ugh. Maybe it doesn't look that bad. I wish they showed... I don't know. I don't really like it. It's too, I don't know, bummer. I like the front, but I don't like the back. Maybe this one, maybe that looks a little bit more intentional. Like, I kind of feel like maybe this was the, like, original intent of the designer and then, you know, Butterick is like, oh, but we have to give them options. And so they're like, okay, well, let's just do these funky sleeves then. Do you know what I mean? But then they made this sample out of, I don't know. I don't know. This one's on my nerves. Crepe de Chine, Charmeuse, Crepe, Georgette, Shelly. Okay. Buttons and elastic. Extra small through medium, large through 2XL. Oh, womp womp. All right, yes, we are in the land of tops, that's for sure. Okay, loose fitting top has gathered sleeve cap. I like that. With self binding, okay. Keyhole neckline with hook and eye closure, elasticized sleeves, sleeve band extending into ties. Okay, first of all, I love this little square, this narrow square neckline a lot. I love the gathered sleeve cap a lot. I can't really tell what's happening here. Isn't that cute? I love that. Here's a little keyhole. That's really sweet. Here it is with no keyhole and a bigger sleeve. Yeah, I like the drapier sleeve better. I like this. What's her sleeve doing? Oh, little tie cuffs. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. I like this one. And the back is nice and normal. But I don't like buying patterns if I only like one version of it. Ugh. Crepe de chine and charm. Okay, are we good with this? You can also add wall to that category, which might be that what this is. I mean, okay, the others are growing on me, I guess. It does look a little tight through here, right? Aren't we getting some like funky lines or is that the fabric? It's really hard to tell. 
right through here, you know, because it's too tight on her hip, so it's writing up, I think. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, uh, hook and eye and some elastic, 6 to 14, 14 to 22, and decent amount of fabric for a long sleeve top for sure. This feels not excessive. Okay, I do love that neckline a lot. And, you know, it wouldn't be the first time that I lengthened all of this and put some elastic in and made it a dress. So that's always an option. All right. I think the last of the tops in Topland. This one's cool. Close fitting top has neckline variations. There's elasticized sleeves, sleeves with button trim, and a front drawstring detail. Yeah, I love this because it creates all this ruching and you can go eat all the Thanksgiving dinner you want and it camouflages everything. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay, I like that. Fun, okay. Yeah, I like this one for sure. That's super cool. I think it might be knits too. Fun, okay. This is interesting. It's not exactly what I thought after just looking at hers. I'm not exactly sure how all this comes together. And no, it's, well, oh, well, there's some knits. Crepe, wool blends, linen, cotton blends, double knit, and ponte. I think because it is so close fitting, you could get away with making it out of knits. This just feels like a some kind of sweater knit to me. This one looks like a sweater knit. Well, I can't feel this one. You know what I mean. They both look like it. Crate, wool blends, linen, cotton blends, double knit, ponty. Hmm, okay. Uh, one 22 inch invisible zipper. What is wrong with these people? Where are you putting a zipper? No, this isn't right. Which makes me think that this isn't right. A wool blend? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I trust this. I would want to look at the pattern. You know, a 22, you don't need a zipper for this. You need buttons. Where are the buttons? Yeah, this isn't right. Okay, we're just going to ignore all that then. Probably have to ignore all this too. So head to the store, figure it out. <laughs> yeah, because look right here, extra small through medium. It's not numbers. Oh, that's so annoying. Okay, well, we're moving on then. All right, next up we have, it looks like pants and a jumpsuit. Oh no, this is a jumpsuit with contrast. That's cool. I love the sash. Little V-neck, that same like longer sleeve. This one's too long though, I think. Close fitting jumpsuits have sleeve and length variation, hidden elastic casing, and back zipper, flared sleeve with ruffle, sleeve ties, and button cuff options for your sleeves. Cute. Super cute. Oh, why is the sash separate? Ugh. All right, well, it's pretty basic, pretty straightforward. Just some sleeve options and length options. This was a nice suggestion to do it in the contrast that I think is very ready to wear. The fit on the pant looks pretty relaxed. I don't get to see her back view, so. Yeah, that's fun. Probably crepes. Yeah, crepe, rayon, crepe back satin, and chalet. One invisible zipper, elastic, some buttons, the uh, numeric sizing, 6 to 14, then 14 to 22, and then here is your yardage, which honestly for like head to toe, you know, long sleeves and pants, that's not that bad. Hmm, 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 hmm. I, my jumpsuits that I have currently... One is backless, one 
Oh, does that, no, one sleeveless? So maybe I could do with a like fallish jumpsuit. I do like the V-neck, that's beautiful. Is there a zipper to get in? Yeah. This one's fun with a cropped length. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This is this one's intriguing me too. This is a if it goes on sale kind of thing and is in stock at Joanne because I don't want to pay shipping. <laughs> okay. All right, perfect. All right, next up are those bomb pants that we saw a couple of patterns ago. They don't look as great here. But the wide leg cropped pant with the booty is definitely a thing that's happening. So just go with it. We also have these slant pockets with the button details. These are even little button tabs and a little belt. I just feel like these are a little long in the waist here, in the rise. They're supposed to be above waist pants. That's why. They're supposed to be above waist pants, but they are sitting below her waist. She needs to, they're too big. She needs to hike them up. Above waist pants, semi-fitted through hip with mock fly front. Have waist facings, carriers, and slash pockets. Decorative buttons, sash, and crop length. B has cuffs. C has a belt with a purchased buckle. There they are with the cuff. Is this a curved pocket or does it just look that way? And it, do you make the belt and buy the buckle? I'm confused. Yeah, these are these are way too big on her. Yeah, belt with a buckle. And then here's our back. It has a single um, dart. Look at that little details, cute. And also no waistband. It's just the facing folded under and top stitched. I think that that's what I like so much about the Vogue pants that I had so much success with. You know, those coral pants I made this spring and then the black ones that I just posted like a week or two ago. I, I am more inclined to give pants a try. I think because I had success with those Vogue ones and also like time heals all wounds and I can't remember how horrible it was to make pants a couple of years ago when I hated it. <clears throat> so wool blends, gabardine, crepe, twill, denim. And then are they fully lined? That's interesting. Let's see. Lining. Five-eighths of a yard of lining. Oh, maybe just for the pocket bag? I don't know what the linings were, but it's the, the pants are not fully lined. Okay. Zippers, hook and eye, buttons, and then a belt buckle. Yeah. So you make the belt and then add your own buckle. I think I could work with these. 6 to 14, and then 14 to 22 on the sizing. And then, look, the crop length is under 2 yards on average. So, yeah, that's not bad. You get a lot of interfacing. Oh, is that for the belt, maybe? Feasible AB. No, no, I don't know. I would be tempted to try these. Oh gosh, why am I saying that? I wish I could see her backside. All right. And that's it. These were all, we've already seen all these, right? Yes. Right? 
I've covered these, right? I feel like I've definitely seen that one. Yes. Yes, you will have to go to my Butterick, oh gosh, what would it have been? Summer? Let me just make sure here. Um, while this is loading, I'll tell you that I have a lot of, oh, was that, I bet that was last fall. That is so interesting. They just didn't separate them. Yeah, here's the fall 2019 lookbook. Um, I have a lot of first impression reviews that I have recorded. I think I have Berta, um, Berta style that needs to go up. And then I also am starting an indie one. Um, so look out for those. It's first impression Friday. <laughs> if you saw my sew along Saturday, you know, you can kind of tell I'm trying to put together, you know, a regular schedule. Um, so it would be first impression Fridays. Um, obviously this one's going up, uh, on a Sunday because it's Butterick. It's one of the big four. You guys are always looking for it. Um, so timeliness relevancy wise, I wanted to get it up before Friday, but you can look for, expect another one on, um, another first impression video on Friday. Here is our lookbook. Okay. So what did you guys think? I am happy. I'm happy with this collection. I'm not going to like go as crazy as I thought I would, but as I was saying about these tops and I feel like a lot of the patterns, um, someone is really trying to like create fashion here. And it's not just like make clothes for the sake of making clothes, but it's like making clothes that feel like you belong in the current, you know, world of fashion, you know, and that's important to some of us. Um, so I really appreciate that. This one I think is so simple yet, you know, a real powerhouse. Love that. Um, yeah, I forgot about this dress, but yeah, very Kate Middleton, very cute. Even this one, you know what I mean? Like they, I feel like someone's just thoughtful, you know, in designing this collection, which I really, really appreciate. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely grab a couple of the dresses. Um, maybe one or so of the tops. Oh, maybe those pants. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, this is our fall 2019 collection. You can look up my fall 2018 collection to see those other patterns. The ones that were... <clears throat> down here. All of these are the 2019 patterns. I'm sorry, 2018 patterns. So you can go find my other Butterick video um, from last fall for that. But let me know what you think of this collection. If you agree with my sentiments about it, um, which of the patterns you will be adding to your collection for this fall. And I guess until my next video, I do have some more planned before Friday. Um, I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching.